From the first snap of the season, Tennessee sent a message to the college football nation. The Vols ushered in the 2006 campaign with a convincing win over a highly touted California. It proved to be the first step en route to a head-turning nine-win season, the tenth time Coach Philip Fulmer's teams have won at least nine games in a single year. Despite key injuries at critical positions, the valiant volunteers kept Coach Fulmer's theme for 2006 close at heart. Tennessee was a team guaranteed to be fired up, focused, and prepared. Big wins against Georgia, Alabama, and South Carolina proved the worth of Fulmer's words and served notice that the Big Orange future is a bright one. Adding to the optimism and the fireworks was offensive coordinator David Cutcliffe. Reunited with head coach Philip Fulmer and defensive coordinator John Chavis, his presence was felt immediately on the practice field. And as another autumn dawned on SEC gridirons throughout the South, his style proved ready for prime time. It all began on September 3rd, 2006. There are better ways to recover from a disappointing season than facing a national championship contender in the first game of the year. But the Tennessee Volunteers have never backed away from a challenge. And besides, what could be a better way to announce its return to the national stage? So it began against the ninth-ranked California Golden Bears. As you can hear the crowd starting to pick it up crescendo-wise as the pride of the Southland band now marches and of the famous T. Whether you're seeing it for the first time or you've seen it from decades, it always stirs the blood. As the pride of the Southland band opened its formation, ladies and gentlemen, here come the Tennessee Volunteers to open the 2006 season. Preseason Heisman hype favored Cal's Marshawn Lynch, and he certainly received plenty of attention against Tennessee's defense. Blasted at the 45-yard line. What a big hit Justin Harrell gets out. The return of David Cutcliffe paid dividends instantly. Creative use of the playbook seemed to ignite a confident Eric Ainge. Ainge fakes the handoff, rolls right, looking for the end zone, fires down at the three-yard line, it's complete, and falling into the end zone is Chris Brown for a Tennessee touchdown. Eric Ainge rolling right. He found Chris Brown at the three-yard line, and then Brown powers his way into the checkerboards for Tennessee's first touchdown in 2006. The biggest surprise for Cal was the inability to move the ball. Of course, it surprised no one in the Tennessee huddle. Least of all, linebacker Gerard Mayo. 
Longshore back to throw. Pressure this time. He's going to be sacked back at the 35-yard line on the blitz by Gerard Mayo. Longshore drops to throw. Tennessee bringing a linebacker. Longshore sets up. Now he comes back. He's being dragged down at the 34-yard line. Waited too long. Gerard Mayo finally got him around the ankles. Wouldn't let him go. And Tennessee gets another sack and another sack by Gerard Mayo. As the second quarter progressed, linebackers proved to be the least of Nate Longshore's troubles. Steps up, fires long. That pass is going to be intercepted by Tennessee down at the 23-yard line. Antoine Stewart picks it up. Now Antoine Stewart runs the other way. He's taken down at the 45-yard line. Antoine Stewart makes the interception. Wide receiver Robert Meacham couldn't let the defense do all the work. And in the waning moments of the first half, Fans caught a glimpse of the success Meacham's season would bring. Ainge under center, three-step drop, quick out. That pass is complete. Meacham breaks a tackle to the 20, to the 10, down the sideline, to the checkerboard. Touchdown, Tennessee. Robert Meacham breaks the tackle and then races for 42 yards for a Tennessee touchdown. The cornerback on that side gambled. It didn't pay off as Meacham caught the ball, broke the tackle, and he was off to the checkerboard. 42 yards wasn't quite enough for number three, so two plays later, 10 and three connected for 80, and of course, that led to six. Sent from the 20. Two-step drop, Ainge quick out. That pass is complete, breaking the tackle again. Robert Meacham to the midfield strike, to the 30, cuts it back now to the 20, to the 10, to the five, to the checkerboard, Robert Meacham all the way for a Tennessee touchdown. 80 yards for Meacham, his second big play of the night for a score. Suddenly, the Tennessee offense had scored two touchdowns in three consecutive plays, and there was more to come. Cal hoped a new half would signal a fresh start for its offense. But with John Chavis at the wheel, their hope was quickly dashed. For Tennessee fans, new names were emerging from the host of volunteers. Ryan Carl, Marvin Mitchell, Xavier Mitchell, and Demetrius Morley were some of the soon-to-be household names added to the Big Orange Pantheon. The beauty of the new look offense was the fresh mix of run and pass. Crisp runs from California native Arian Foster allowed Jason Swain and Eric Ainge to work it out. Two-step drop, now three, looks, fires the ball down the middle. Jason Swain behind the Cal defense, in for a Tennessee touchdown. Swain ran, ran right down the numbers, down the seam pass, and Eric Ainge found him. Jason Swain in stride, 50-yard strike. Eric Ainge has four touchdown passes tonight. That one perfectly thrown to the senior, Jason Swain. At this point, the Vols had scored on three touchdowns in six plays, and the night was still young. Listen to this crowd at Neyland Stadium. Defensively, the hits just kept coming until midway through the third quarter, when tailback Montario Hardesty added the fourth touchdown in seven plays. Talk about efficiency on offense. Ontario Hardesty running right, still fighting his way, still on his feet, breaks a tackle down the sideline to the 20, to the 10. Hardesty's going to score a Tennessee touchdown. He did it on his own. At that point, prognosticators had to wonder how a clearly outmatched team from California could ever have been favored over the men in orange. And just when things were going bad for the Bears, it got worse. Crowd roars as A.U. drops back in the shotgun. Tennessee showing blitz. A.U. waits for the snap. Here they come. Jailbreak. A.U. running for his life, just bombs the ball downfield, and it's going to be intercepted. Intercepted by Tennessee's Inky Johnson. Takes it back to the 25-yard line, and down he goes. But Tennessee's defense comes up with yet another big play, and this game is over on opening night. Tennessee big plays California to death and wins 35-18 here at Neyland Stadium. For his efforts against the Golden Bears, linebacker Gerard Mayo was named the Walter Camp National Defensive Player of the Week. The win catapulted the Volunteers' ranking from 23 to 11 as they faced another non-conference foe in Week 2. Haynes trying to get in the end zone right before half to take the lead for the first time tonight. He'll operate out of the shotgun formation. Ainge drops to throw, looks left, fires, touchdown, Tennessee, Jason Swain. They overload 
Floated, floated to the left side. Swain, the inside receiver, found the soft spot in the Air Force secondary. Ainge finds him in the checkerboards for a Tennessee touchdown. And the Volunteers have the lead with 28 seconds to go. The touchdown pass from Ainge was his sixth of the young season. He had already surpassed his touchdown total for the entire 2005 season. And with his bevy of receivers, he wasn't likely to slow down even when the opening drive of the second quarter began at the one yard line. This drive has taken over five minutes of the third quarter. Ainge back to throw off the play fake. Fires long down the left sideline. Down at the 10 yard line, the pass is, did he catch it? Yes! Montario Hardesty would get the honors from three yards out. At the three yard line, Tennessee trying to complete a 99 yard opening drive in the third quarter. Ainge, hands off, tailback, Hardesty powering toward the end zone. He's in, touchdown Tennessee. Air Force is going for the win. And Air Force breaks the huddle. The ball on the left hash mark, wide side to the right. They got one receiver out that way. Under center, Sean Carney. The two point conversion to put him in front. Here's the toss sweep near side. They're gonna sack him at the five yard line. Biggest play of the night by Xavier Mitchell. He corrals Chad Hall and wrestles him down at the five. And Tennessee maintains the lead. On the two-point play, 31-30. What a play by Mitchell. He saw it came bursting across the line of scrimmage. The thrilling win over Air Force came with a price. Injury to Inky Johnson meant the end of a career. Justin Harrell's torn biceps muscle meant the end of a season. Almost. In spite of impending surgery, doctors cleared Harrell for one more game. It would take more than pain to keep him down. Is there any better expression of what college football is about or what this contest between Tennessee and Florida represents? So the stage was set. Ladies and gentlemen, this is college football pageantry at its finest. Tennessee with two tight ends in the game. They'll fake it. Now here's the end around. They're going to throw it. Firing the ball long down the field. That's going to be caught by LaMarcus Coker. And Coker is going to dive for the checkerboards. He's close. He's in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Lucas Taylor throws the ball. And it's going to be a touchdown for Tennessee. 49 yards. On the next play from scrimmage, it seemed to go from bad to worse for the Gators. Out of the shotgun. And around. Nothing as they snack him back at the two-yard line. It was Cornelius coming from the right side across the formation. Lee cannon off in front, and Robert Ayers lassoed him, wrestled him down. What a big play. On Florida's next possession, things got interesting. Leak out of the shotgun, drops to throw. The blitz is on the pass, intercepted at the 20-yard line. Going to be run back for a Tennessee touchdown by Marvin Mitchell. There's a penalty flag down. Mitchell intercepts the pass at the 20 and races to the checkerboards for a score. We'll see what the penalty is. Marcus Coker, the tailback, and they run up the middle. Coker breaks it to the outside. Coker gets a block, turns the corner. He's at the midfield strike now. Coker down the sideline to the 40. They'll never catch him. He's to the 20, to the 10, to the checkerboards. LaMarcus Coker, 89 yards. <laughs> Coker got to the point of attack. Then he just put a couple of moves on, turned the Jets on down the left sideline, and nobody from Marshall came close. It was the third longest run in Tennessee history. Only Kelsey Finch's 99-yarder from 1977 and Dick Dodson's 91-yarder from 1927 were longer. And for Coker, it ramped up his per carry average to 10.5 yards. The defense was worth noting as well. Shutting down Marshall also placed Marvin Mitchell, Jonathan Hefney, and Gerard Mayo among the top five tacklers in the SEC. But the conference took note of the offense too, naming Aaron Sears the offensive lineman of the week. God dang, that's a tough offseason. Tough spring, tough summer. Challenging our leadership, challenging our seniors. Fought your butt off, you did one-legged dogs, three-legged dogs, crabs, sprints, 31 tens in one day, in one setting, to get to this moment tonight. 
The Vols dropped in on Georgia one week later. The Bulldogs game plan included a healthy dose of the run that bent the volunteer defense, but did not break it. Inside handoff goes to Lumpkin. He's going to be hit and drop back at the 30 yard line. Tennessee guessed right. Antonio Reynolds cut him off and then slammed him to the turf. A loss of five on that play. More pressure on Georgia quarterback Joe Tarashinsky forced a 22 yard field goal attempt. On the far hash mark, Andy Bailey. Gets the snap down, goes to kick the ball, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. Close to the goal line. This Beginning with the ensuing good. kick return, LaMarcus Coker found more ways to contribute. LaMarcus Coker breaks it out to the 30, and Coker takes it out to the 40-yard line. Inside handoff goes to Coker up the middle. Running room breaks a tackle to the 40, down to the Georgia 35-yard line, and down to the 32. LaMarcus Coker making guys miss. But through the air success would come to Brett Smith. Ainge under center, fakes the handoff, fires for the end zone, down the middle, that's going to be a touchdown for Tennessee, Brett Smith, right at the goal post in the back of the end zone. The play fake, and then Eric Ainge steps up, Brett Smith goes right down the middle of the field, and Ainge hitting perfectly for a Tennessee touchdown. Georgia responded through the air, but Tennessee's defense would not take the offense lightly. In spite of the Vols' surly attitude, Georgia ended the first quarter on a roll. Georgia going to come up with five seconds on the first quarter clock. I don't think they'll get this snap off, and they will not. Well, yeah, they hand it to the fullback, and he's in for a Georgia touchdown with no time showing on the first quarter clock. The offense struggled a bit early in the second quarter, and Georgia added to the woes with special teams. Henderson makes a break to the outside. Henderson at the 40. Henderson to midfield. Henderson's going to go all the way to the 30, to the 20. Mikey Henderson goes in for a Georgia touchdown. A crisp attack on Georgia's next possession led to a 24-7 lead in Athens. Rather than panic, the troops in Orange stuck to the game plan. That determination paid dividends on a brilliant drive to end the half. As Eric Ainge operates out of the shotgun, gets the snap, drops to throw, looks, fires the out pattern, complete down to the 10-yard line, to the five and out of bounds. And where are they going to mark him out? They're going to say at the one-yard line, Brett Smith, tight roping down the near sideline, caught the ball at the five, and somehow got it down to the one. Ainge under center. Gets the snap, hands to Foster, and he's stoned, stuffed. And now they say he's in the end zone. Forward progress got him in. It, Foster just got to the goal line, then he was shoved back, but he got enough. The penetration into the end zone, and Tennessee scores a touchdown. 11 plays, 65 yards on the drive. Georgia fans hoped the Bulldogs would seize the momentum in the second half, but the Volunteers sent a message immediately. Brown's going to be taken down at the five-yard line. He was pinned against the left sideline, tried to cut it off. Maxim all the number two field. implores, play four and make the breaks. On and when down. one comes your and way, score. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Maxim back. number two. Pass over the middle, deflected, intercepted. Antoine Stewart picks it off. The ball deflected and tended for Mikey Henderson. And Antoine Stewart, the senior cornerback, comes up and picks off his second interception of the season. First came the break, and then came the score. Ainge, quarterback sneak to the goal line and in for a Tennessee touchdown. Quarterback sneak by Eric Ainge, and Tennessee is struck first in this third quarter. Same formation. Georgia tried to answer with the power running that worked so well early, but John Chavis's group was in no mood and left the Bulldogs with few options short of field goals. Safe kick on the way, and that kick is a lot of leg and good. Third and 13 in its own five-yard line. Even in precarious situations, the confidence building in this group of volunteers was evident. The throw, fires a long, deep out pattern complete up to the 20-yard line and out of bounds, Robert Meacham for a first down. Trey Battle shoves him out, but Ainge had time to throw and Meacham a deep out pattern for the first down. What a big catch. I know that's just the first down on your own 22, but that may be the biggest play Tennessee's had all night so far. Fortunately, there were plenty of big plays left. Quick throw is good up to the 40-yard line. Breaking a tackle, Robert Meacham down the right sideline to the 40 to the Georgia 35-yard line and out of bounds. The Tennessee drive stalled after Meacham's heroics, but three points only added to the orange momentum. There's the snap, the kick on the way, the kick spinning toward the goalpost. The crowd is quiet because the kick is good.
If the crowd was quiet when it was good, it was deadly silent when things were bad. Tereshinsky drops to throw, fires over the middle. That pass is going to be intercepted by Tennessee at the 35-yard line. Jonathan Wade steps in front of the intended receiver and picks it off. So the third quarter would end with Georgia still in the lead, but that would change immediately. He fakes to him, throws to the end zone, man, wide open, touchdown Tennessee. Oh, Meacham. Tennessee takes the lead, 30-27. What a great throw by Eric Ainge to give Tennessee the lead. This stadium is very quiet right now. As Tennessee is roared back from being down 24-7, as Will Hoyt now boots the extra point through, Tennessee now leads it 31-27. Again, Georgia found itself backed up and unable to answer. Gets the snap, it's high, but he brings it down, and it's blocked! It's blocked by Tennessee, rolling in the end zone. Tennessee diving for it. Touchdown, Tennessee! The Volunteers score on special teams. They block the punt, and then they fall on it in the end zone. Antonio Wardlow is the guy who recovers it in the end zone, and he's got the ball and running off to the Tennessee bench. Georgia responded matching special teams points with special teams points. Unfortunately for the dogs, they couldn't keep Tennessee's offense off the field forever. The Georgia kickoff, it's short, very short. Gonna come down at the 15 yard line. Fielding the punt, uh, the kickoff is Lamarcus Coker. He's got some running room to the 35, to the 40. Coker's still on his feet, breaks a tackle, reverses his field. Coker now taken down at the 45 yard line. Georgia a four man front, age three man, a three step drop, fires over the middle. That pass complete, Brett Smith down to the Georgia 30 yard line. Two wideouts to the left out of the shotgun, third and eight. Back to throw, Eric Ames looking, stepping up. He's got some room to run, fires over the middle, complete. Now breaking a tackle is Robert Meacham, and Meacham's going to be shoved out of bounds. And now a late hit right in front of the Tennessee bench. Ainge under center. Ainge three-step drop. Sets up, fires, hit as he throws. Pass complete. Down to the five-yard line. Breaking a tackle. Brett Smith close to the end zone. He didn't get in. He's down at the one-yard line. Ainge, tight formation. Arian Foster, the tailback. Ainge hands it to him. Foster dives. He's into the end zone. Linebacker Marvin Mitchell did not lead the team in tackles, but he certainly led the way to one of the night's biggest tackles. It's loose. It's a fumble, and Tennessee falls on it. Tennessee knocks it free, and the Volunteers have come up with a football. Gerard with the ball back under orange control and with plenty of time left, Tennessee found itself nearly unable to slow the momentum. Translation? It was a night of half a hundred points. Foster struggling for the end zone. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Arian Foster dragging a bulldog with him, going around right tackle. Struggles and gets into the end zone. His third touchdown tonight, and Tennessee has 50 points on Georgia. This game was probably over much earlier in the fourth quarter, but Jonathan Hefney's interception sealed the deal. That deflection. And the Volunteer secondary comes up with yet another interception this half. The Tennessee Volunteers, what a comeback. Down 24 to seven, the Volunteers dominate Georgia as Tennessee wins big in Athens, 51-33. There are so many people and so many groups of people that stepped up tonight. That was truly a team effort and a team win all the way around. Okay, a lesser group of men, and y'all, y'all, y'all manned up tonight. What? A, lesser, a lesser group of men in a hostile environment like we were in, okay, down at the half, okay, like we were. And by guys, you saw the passion out there to set the tempo in the first five minutes, okay, and get that kickoff coverage, get that turnover, and bam, bam, bam. That was damn Tennessee football player. Hey! Coach Cook, a great job tonight. Thank Everybody you, out hey. Coach Cook! Coach Tate, great hey. job tonight. Hey. All you're doing is building that mountain higher and higher. You've got your swagger back. You don't forget, don't forget for one second what it felt like mm -hmm. when you didn't have it, okay? Mm -hmm. Stay hungry, stay humble, come to practice ready to work. The one and only open date of the season gave fans a chance to revel in the promise of a six and one season and to prepare for the Crimson Tide. The Tide rolled in with an emphasis on the ground game and the game plan produced three points late in the first quarter. 
Snap down, kick on the way. Spinning toward the goal post, and that kick is good. Alabama scores first. David Cutcliffe matched wits with journeyman defensive coordinator Joe Kimes and looked for his go-to guys to keep Alabama guessing. That's a throw there's probably not three or four quarterbacks in America could make. He threw that ball about 40 yards in the air on a string all the way across the field to a well-covered receiver. A balanced attack was working well until mistakes took away opportunities. The Vols had outscored the last three opponents 58 to 13. So adversity early in the game didn't worry anybody, least of all Eric Ainge or Brett Smith. Brett Smith gets it, breaks a tackle into Alabama territory to the 25 to the 20 and out of bounds. They went, they overloaded the right side with three wideouts and then Brett Smith snuck down the hash marks and Eric Ainge hit him with a big play, 39 yards and Tennessee has a first down. When the drive stalled, there was a reliable option. There it is, ball put down, Will Hoyt bangs the kick up and that kick is good. And so Tennessee ties the game with 6.26 to go. Before halftime, Eric Ainge would have a chance to make the biggest play of the game. The throw slings it out. That pass is intercepted by Castile, his second of the day. Down the right sideline, he's to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Ainge tries to knock him out of bounds, knocks him off his feet. He goes out of bounds at the eight-yard line. If not for the hustle of Ainge, Alabama was assured of seven points. As it was, the defense stood up to the tie who settled for three. It would be two quarters before anyone would realize just how important the four point difference would be. With the second half underway, the defense was prepared to keep this game a low scoring affair. And the crowd making noise. Back to throw is Wilson. Here's the blitz. Wilson steps up and he got him back at the 30 yard line. Xavier Mitchell comes in and drags him down. Big sack for Tennessee as they get to John Parker Wilson. And Jonathan Hefney held up his end of the bargain too. A uh, floating kick that Hefney will take at his own 27. Looks for some running room. Gets to the corner. Hefney now cuts the ball up the field. He's at the midfield strike to the 40 yard line. And Jonathan Hefney is taken down by the punter Fitzgerald at the 40 at the 35 yard line. Another Will Hoyt field goal tied the tie and set the stage for a typical Alabama-Tennessee tussle. Down, it's a good one, the kick on the way, spinning toward the goalpost, and that kick is good, and Tennessee has tied the game. After some interesting calls, Alabama found itself at the goal line looking for the go-ahead score. Alabama under center is Wilson. Hands off tailback Castile, and he powers in for an Alabama touchdown on her left guard. Ainge and company had the answer, and it involved balance. When the run was less effective, they just found a different way to get the ball in the hands of Arian Foster. Looks, still looks, dumps the pass out in the flat, complete to Arian Foster. Foster gets away from one, and then he's taken down as he gets inside the 15, down to the 12-yard line. Points were highly valued, so when the ball got close, the offense took the sure three and waited for the defense to give them one more chance at victory. Clock stops, 6.57 to go on the crowd now, stands and urges on this Tennessee defense. Bama today has not been very good on third downs, only three of 12. Big one here. Wilson back to throw, here's the blitz, gets rid of it, the pass over the middle, incomplete at the 45-yard line. The defense was up to the challenge, and Bama could manage only four plays. He operates from his own 30. Most importantly, the clock still held over six minutes when Tennessee mounted a drive. Right outs on either side. Ainge looks at the Alabama defense. They've got six men at the line of scrimmage. Now they drop back. Ainge drops to throw after the snap. Looks, fires over the middle. Safe pass underneath to Arian Foster. Ainge waits for the snap, gets it, drops. Three-step drop, fires that pass, deflected, penalty flag. Pass interference. Alabama 13, Tennessee 9. It's a five-yard pickup on that play. Ainge gets the snap and drops to throw. Ainge steps up. Fires the ball down the sideline. The pass is complete down to the 33-yard line, and Robert Meacham has wrestled out of bounds. First down, Tennessee. Big pass by Eric Ainge. He bought some time, stepped up, and that pass good for 27 yards to Meacham. Foster out of the shotgun. Three wideouts to the left, the wide side. He drops to throw, three-step. Pulls back, sets up a screen. He's got a play. Gets it to Foster down the sideline. Foster taken out of bounds at the 21-yard line. That should be a first down. Ainge. Fakes it, pulls it right, dumps the pass in the flat. That's complete down the right sideline. Arian Foster out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. 
down to the seven. Jeffrey Dukes knocks him out of bounds. That's a pickup of 10. And Arian Foster has become a weapon catching the football. Play call of the day for David Cutcliffe. Everybody was looking for off guard, off tackle, to just get the first down and keep it alive. He faked that flip, nice flip out, of, out to Foster by Ainge. Big first down. Three wide outs to the left. Ainge gets the ball, rolls to the left, looks for the end zone, sets up, fires the pass at the goal line. That's going to be no signal yet. Did he catch it? They're still talking to each other. Is it a touchdown or did he catch it? They say he caught the ball, but he's going to be short of the touchdown. Brett Smith makes the catch at about the six-inch line, but he couldn't fall into the end zone. Here we go, third and goal, Tennessee at the six-inch line. Alabama leads 13-9, Tennessee goes for the lead. Two tight ends, wing to the left, two running backs. Handoff, diving for the end zone. Arian Foster's into the checkerboard. Touchdown, Tennessee, and the Volunteers take the lead finally against Alabama. 3.28 to go, and Tennessee leads 15-13. Give Eric Ainge a lot of credit. He's had a tough afternoon, but he was masterful on that drive, particularly the throw. He had the patience on the throw that got the ball to the 6-H line. He just kept rolling and kept rolling and then put it in there. The drive was a thing of beauty. Nine plays, 70 yards in three minutes and 12 seconds. For Alabama, there would be two chances for do-or-die time. On both occasions, the Tennessee defense would not budge. And he stands and cheers, urging the Tennessee defense. Wilson back to throw on third down. Sets up, fires the pass deep out. That's going to be incomplete up to the 32-yard line. They were going for D.J. Hall, but Jonathan Hefty, the veteran safety, jumps in front and knocks that ball away. Tennessee leads by three. They chase Wilson. They've got him a sack. Big sack by Antonio Reynolds. He drags him down from behind. Clock runs, 30 seconds to go. Reynolds a big stop. Alabama trying to get to the line of scrimmage and get the play back in motion. The clock continues to roll, 22 seconds. John Parker Wilson out of the shotgun, drops to throw. He's being chased. He'll be sacked back at the 21-yard line. Gerard Mayo caps off a brilliant day with a sack. Alabama won't be able to run another play. Three seconds, two seconds, victory over Alabama. Tennessee wins it and come from behind fashion 16-13 over the Crimson Tide. With a number eight national ranking, Tennessee invaded South Carolina's williams Bryce Stadium with payback on its mind. There would be a price to pay for the one-point loss suffered in 2005, and Steve Spurrier's troops were destined to foot the bill. The Tennessee defense wasted little time in setting the tone on the game's opening series. Fires a little seam pass over the middle. That ball is knocked away. Now it's picked up, and Marvin Mitchell rumbles for the end zone. Mitchell picks up the fumble and scores. Scores a Tennessee touchdown. They knock the ball away. Mitchell gets it, and Mitchell goes in for a touchdown, and Tennessee strikes early. The defense comes up with a big, big play. Mitchell, I think, might have stripped that ball away from the receiver and goes in for the score. But Mitchell comes up with the ball, takes it away, and goes in for a touchdown. And just like that, Tennessee leads 7 to nothing. Later in the same quarter, the Gamecocks would get yet another opportunity, but they would be disappointed once again. Back to throw from the five-yard line, pumps it, runs it, Dumps it, the pass deflected, Corey Boyd's off his hands, it's intercepted in the end zone by Jonathan Wade. As Newton tried to make something happen, he was going down, flipped the ball into the end zone, and it bounced off Corey Boyd's hands and went right to Jonathan Wade, who gets the interception. Jonathan Wade was making a name for himself with his big play abilities. Fortunately, David Cutcliffe knew a few names on his side of the ball. Ainge, Smith, Meacham, and Hardesty all got the call on an 80-yard, 10-play drive that capitalized on Wade's gift. Speaking of gifts. Ainge gets the snap, delays the handoff, rolls right, looks for the end zone, has all kinds of time. Ainge still looking, fires the ball. That pass is going to be knocked into the air and caught in the back of the end zone. Brett Smith, touchdown, Tennessee. It went right through the hands of a Carolina defender, right to Brett Smith, and Tennessee has scored. Three balls have been tipped in the air in the first quarter of this ball game. Tennessee got an interception for a touchdown, an interception in their own end zone, and this time a very fortunate touchdown by Brett Smith. 
The defense applied pressure to the slippery Savelle Newton and forced the Gamecocks into a field goal to start the second quarter. And a touchdown proved their reward as the first half drew to a close. In the third quarter, Newton continued to bend the Tennessee defense. But on a critical fourth down, Jonathan Wade would not break. Newton under center, going to run the option to Boyd near side. He bobbles the pitch, gets it back, and he's going to be sacked back at the 33-yard line. Big play by Jonathan Wade. They tried to run the option, but the toss back to Boyd was high. He bobbled it. By the time he got it back, Jonathan Wade was all over him, and the fourth down play does not work. Brad Cottom evolved as a nice weapon for Eric Ainge, but when field position becomes an issue, Tennessee brings out the big gun. Snap low, but uh, Colquitt gets it and hangs a high, booming spiral. McKinley going to let that ball bounce at the five, and that ball is going to roll and take a right-hand turn out of bounds at the one-yard line. The ball smelled blood and unleashed an onslaught that may not have been effective in the short run, but the pounding on Newton would eventually yield long-term results. Suddenly, the Vols were down in the fourth quarter. He's in, Brent Smith, a man wide open, touchdown Tennessee. Arian Foster's into the checkerboard. But Tennessee had outscored its previous four opponents 68 to 13 in the fourth quarter. So a fourth quarter comeback in Columbia was no reason to panic. Here comes the blitz, Ainge drops the throw. They pick it up, Ainge fires, that pass complete down to the 15 yard line. That'll be a first down, Jason Swain makes the big catch and he's tackled at the 13 yard line. Carolina leads at 17-14, but Tennessee threatens. Ainge, play fake, flags everywhere. Ainge fires the pass, that's complete down to the five, and into the end zone, Brett Smith makes the reception and goes in for a touchdown. But the a three and out for South Carolina put the ball back in the hands of a restless Jonathan Hefney. Hefney looks for running room, comes to the 35, reverses field, tries to get to the wall, needs one block, Hefney to midfield, Hefney down the right sideline to the 30, Hefney still on his feet to the 20, Hefney is taken down, inside the 10-yard line at the seven-yard line. Tennessee sets up the wall, and Jonathan Hefney gets it, runs down the right sideline, a 50-yard punt, but a 65-yard return by Jonathan Hefney. The shortest scoring drive of the night came compliments of Arian Foster. Ainge under center, Ainge hands to Foster over left tackle. He's into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. What a big block as Tennessee got it, and they went right over David Ligon and Aaron Sears, Arian Foster on a first and goal from the five-yard line. Touchdown, Tennessee, and the Volunteers lead it 27-17. That was power running. That was great blocking. A stalled SC drive put Tennessee in the driver's seat with eight minutes to play. The Gamecocks guessed the Vols would hit the ground, but Robert Meacham had them guessing again. Sideline complete, down to the 35-yard line. Robert Meacham to the 10 and taken out of bounds at the five-yard line. Jeff, did you ever make off a, make a checkoff that was that good in your life? Well, I'll tell you what, you can either you know get run the ball, run three, three or four first downs, you can throw about a 60-yard to Robert Meacham, whatever I, you'd like. Oh, what a check. He, he saw South Carolina nine guys up on the line of scrimmage. He said Meacham can beat number Tennessee one. Tennessee managed only two yards after the pass to Meacham, but it had bigger issues to deal with after quarterback Eric Ainge suffered an injury to his ankle. The aftershocks of the play and the injury would reverberate for the next two weeks. Inside, fakes the handoff, Crompton fires for the end zone, looking for Meacham, Meacham's got it! Touchdown, Tennessee! Meacham a fingertip catch! Perfect throw by Jonathan Crompton. 37 yards on the strike. The play action works, and Jonathan Crompton throws his first Tennessee touchdown. The flying feet of Russell proved to be LSU's best answer against Tennessee's motivated defense. But it was Russell's arm that ended the Tigers' late first half push. Tennessee blitzing. Russell steps up. Russell dumps the pass down the field. It's intercepted down at the eight yard line. Picked off by Jonathan Hefty. Hefty down the near sideline of the 40. Hefty taken down, and Tennessee gets the big turnover to stop the LSU drive. Jamarcus Russell threw a pass, a deep out pattern that was picked off down inside the 10 yard line, and Jonathan Hefty returns at 34 yards for Tennessee. Big play by Tennessee's junior free safety. With just a minute to play, Tennessee went to work. Crompton sets up, fires the pass over the middle, complete to a wide open Jason Swain at midfield. Crompton 
at the LSU 38 yard line. Tries his tailback. Some roll over left guard. There goes Arian Foster down to the 20 yard line and out of bounds. He's taken inside the 20. Leron Landry, horse collars him, but the draw play works. And now Tennessee's in the orange zone. With the clock winding down and LSU's D stiffening, James Wilhoyt got the call. Woods gets it, puts it down. Wilhoyt boots it. It's up and through. And Tennessee leads 10 to 7 with three seconds left to go in this first half. Coaches say the first five minutes of the second half are the most important, and Demetrius Morley took it to heart. Russell on second down, three-step drop, quick slant pattern, deflected at the line, of is intercepted at the 25, down to the 10, to the 5, cutting back for a Tennessee touchdown, Demetrius Morley! The pass deflected, Morley picks it off and returns it 30 yards for a Tennessee touchdown. The Volunteers jump in front 16-7. Second down, Russell slip screen again. Dwayne Bowe gets it, lost the football, it's loose around the 45 yard line, and Tennessee has recovered. Ryan Carl comes up with the strip as Dwayne Bowe, same play, they've run three different times, and the ball was knocked free by Jonathan Wade and recovered by Ryan Carl. Tennessee gets it back, what a huge turnover. And then David Cutcliffe went for the jugular. Fakes it to Arian Foster, sets up, winds up, fires long down the field. That pass is going to be caught down at the five-yard line. And on the checkerboard. Touchdown, Robert Meacham. What a play by Crompton, and what a terrific catch and effort by Robert Meacham. 54 yards, and Tennessee takes the lead. Unbelievable catch. Unbelievable catch. Crompton just winds up and fires it long down the middle of the field. There are LSU defenders back there, but Meacham goes up and takes it away from two of them and then spins into the end zone for a Tennessee touchdown. Just, wow, what a play. Just an incredible play. The Tennessee team took the field and its fans took over the stadium as usual in Nashville for the 11th game of the season. Right away, James Wilhoy got the ball rolling. This will be a 43-yard attempt for the near hash mark. Kick on the way, spinning toward the uprights, and that kick is good. This game gave the rehabilitated Eric Ainge a chance to get reacquainted with his bevy of receivers. It had been two weeks since his arm or his ankle had been tested, but on this day, he proved fully recovered. As the first quarter continued, James Wilhoyt was called upon to add to his rising scoring total. Ryan West, there it is. Casey Woods puts it down. The kick on the way. And that kick, as well, is good. Before the quarter ended, Vandy found the end zone for the first and the last time of the day. From there, it was all Tennessee. So now Coker in the tailback, second down and right at five yards to go. Inside the 10-yard line, handoff Coker to the outside, to the five, to the end zone. He somersaults in for a touchdown. LaMarcus Coker with that blazing speed around the right side, takes it all the way into the end zone. Wow, Coker got to the corner right now. The defense seemed angry for giving ground to Vandy the previous quarter and literally shut him down the rest of the half. Offensively, that fury was matched. Passing was the mode of transport for this precision drive. Looks over the Vanderbilt defense, gets the snap, straight drop, looks, looks, fires, touchdown, Tennessee, back in the end zone, Jason Swain. Ainge just had all kinds of time, sets up and fires a bullet right at the goalpost to Jason Swain, who hauls in his sixth touchdown catch of the year. Good throw by... Eric Ainge and Tennessee leads at 19 to seven. The half had changed, but not the attitude. More of the same greeted the Commodores, and that meant plenty of opportunity for quarterback Eric Ainge, tight end Brad Cotter, and place kicker James Wilhoyt. On the way, the kick is up and good. And so Tennessee scores first possession, third quarter, first and 10. LaMarcus Coker just couldn't let Wilhoyt have all the fun. Ainge handoff, LaMarcus Coker going around the left side, breaks it to the 30. Coker breaks it all to the 40, to the 50. They'll never catch Coker. He's to the 20, he's to the 10. He's all the way for a Tennessee touchdown. LaMarcus Coker, what speed. He outruns the entire Vanderbilt team and goes 87 yards. Speed kills, it's just simple as that. Left side off tackle play, 
lead block block by Brad Cottom, who was the H-back. The safety had the angle on him. The corner looked like he was going to close from the side. He just outran them all, and when he passed the safety, nobody in Vanderbilt secondary is going to catch Lamarcus Copeland. The defense finished out the quarter giving up absolutely nothing, and in fact, began the fourth quarter taking a little. A hits is his throw. That pass is intercepted by Tennessee's Jonathan Hefty. Down to the 30-yard line. Hefty to the 20. Hefty still on his feet now, taking that at the 18. And that pass was picked off by Hefney, his fifth interception of the season. He returns at 28 yards, and the Tennessee secondary comes up with a big play. Jonathan Hefney couldn't get to the end zone, but with the offense clicking on all cylinders, that didn't matter. Ainge, play fake, fires for the end zone. First play, touchdown, Tennessee! Big throw, back of the end zone, touchdown, Robert Meacham, 17 yards. After the turnover, Tennessee goes for the strike on the very first play, and Meacham hauls it in. He has 10 touchdowns on the season, and Tennessee makes it 35-7. to After that, if Vandy thought it had a chance at victory, Jonathan Wade decreased the odds. 47, that pass intercepted Jonathan Wade down the right sideline to the 20, Wade to the 10, to the 5, all the way, Tennessee touchdown. 45 yards for Jonathan Wade on the touchdown. There's a penalty flag down. Come on down. Let's see, it looks like he might have, I guess they're going to say he stepped out of bounds. Jonathan Wade just a step away and a hair from going all the way on that. From there, James Wilhoyt ensured Wade's antics did not go unrewarded. There's the snap, the kick on the way, spinning high and long, and three more for Wilhoyt. Tennessee expands the lead over Vanderbilt to 39-7. The blowout gave younger players a chance to prove themselves, and Rico McCoy rose to the occasion. His exploits kept the doors out of the end zone, and this game ended the way Tennessee teams are used to. Wearing number 29 in honor of the injured Inky Johnson, Jonathan Wade and his fellow seniors said goodbye to Neyland Stadium before the battle with Kentucky. Very emotional, you know. Uh, you remember, you always remember the first time you went to three and the last time you went to three. Anything else is just a blur, but you know, this one right here is very emotional. You see the people that you came in with, the people that you cried with, you got you got tormented by the older guys with, so it was definitely an uh, emotional, emotional game right here. You know, this is the last game in the end, still. Sitting there in the tunnel, you know, waiting other guys get called out, you know, felt a few tears roll down my eye, you know. I've been playing football all my life, and you know, just being around this atmosphere, you know, fans, the stadium, you know, sports staff, it's just an awesome feeling. Uh, talk to friends back home, other guys that I played high school football with at other division uh, colleges, and they're surprised about some of the things that I tell them that we do here. So it's just, you know, it's just a sorry thing. I'm definitely gonna miss uh, being here at the University of Tennessee. It's never been easy for Kentucky and Neyland Stadium, and this day would be no different. The defense set the tempo from the start with pressure up front. The speed of LaMarcus Coker came in handy on the opening offensive drive for the Volunteers, and the three-point payoff seemed to be just a warm-up. For Will Hoyt, this day was a chance to move up to second place on the Vols' all-time scoring list with 317 total points. That kick is up and good by James Wilhoyt. Still in the first quarter, the Wildcats faced a fourth and three and hoped to catch the Vols napping. No such luck. Fires the ball long down the sideline, incomplete, down at the three yard line. With the second possession underway for the offense, it seemed all systems were go. And here's Ainge, play fake, looks, firing right down the right sideline. That pass is gonna be complete, down at the 12 yard line, and Robert Meacham and out of bounds. This drive offered Robert Meacham plenty of opportunity to show off his All-America talents, and two plays later, he would have the chance to show off his scoring talent as well. Points again on its second possession. Two wideouts to the left, Ainge under center. Ainge fakes the handoff, being pressured, gets rid of the ball, throws it for the end zone, and it's gonna be a touchdown, Tennessee! Robert Meacham in the back of the checkerboards! Calls it in, got one foot down, and Meacham on a 15-yard throw from Eric Gage gives Tennessee its first touchdown of the day. What a catch by...
Devon Meacham. Keep him out of the end. The defense gave up a few second quarter yards, but not when it mattered most. Handoff, little, hit down, short. Stopped at the three yard line, no gain on the play. Elix Wilson comes up and knocks him down. So Tennessee's defense bows its back and keeps the Cats out of the end zone, so they'll bring the field goal unit on. This will be from the 16 yard line. A 26 yard field goal attempt, kick on its way, and that kick is good, and the Wildcats are on the board. Kentucky finally put together a drive with a seven point payoff. And just when it looked like the offense would have a chance to respond, the defense hit the field again. Just inside the one yard line, third and goal. Woodson under center, backs in the eye formation. Woodson waits for the snap, hands to his fullback. Oh no, he fakes it. And now he gets the ball off to the tailback and he's knocked down. Raphael Little hit down by Ryan Carl. The half would end with Tennessee allowing just one more field goal, but that's where they would draw the line. And through and Kentucky takes the lead. The second half found the defense in a foul mood and Andre Woodson took the brunt of it. The payoff for his trouble was a missed field goal to freeze the Cats point total at 12. He missed it. If the momentum wasn't already swinging Tennessee's way, Robert Meacham made sure of it on the following drive. A quick pass to Meacham is complete, breaks a tackle. Meacham to the 40, to the 30 and out of bounds. Robert Meacham. LaMarcus Coker was banged up early in the game, but appeared 100% when he returned to rack up more of his 90 yards on the day. McNeil, and he's rolled down at the 17 yard line. McNeil pounding the turf, he just couldn't get out of Coker's way. Finally, that slowed him up enough for the Kentucky defense to get there. E.J. Adams gets him down. That's a pickup of 14 yards. As the third quarter expired, so too did Kentucky's ability to stop Robert Meacham. By day's end, the junior from Tulsa would pass Marcus Nash to become Tennessee's new single season yardage leader. Robert Meacham makes the catch. At a school known as wide receiver U, that feat is certainly noteworthy. His 116 yards on the day moved him into fifth place on UT's all-time receiving list. One yard away was no problem. Fourth down and one yard away just made it more interesting. Fourth down and goal just outside the Kentucky one-yard line. Tennessee with the power formation. Standing tailback LaMarcus Coker behind the fullback. Handoff, Coker up. He's in for a Tennessee touchdown. LaMarcus Coker dives into the checkerboards, and Tennessee takes the lead with 14.02 to go in the fourth quarter, 16 to 12. A fourth and goal, and Tennessee goes for it, and it pays off. And if ten, I think if, if Swain had been tackled at the three or something, they don't go for it, but this time he was at about a foot or foot and a half out. If you can't make that, you don't deserve to win. Uh, I applaud Coach Fulmer. That was the right call. Make it or not, you got to go for it in that situation. You don't win this Kentucky mounted a good response on the ensuing drive, but when fourth down came around, senior Turk McBride came through. Handoff, little, he's going nowhere. Drop, Turk McBride. They tried the draw play on fourth and two, and Turk McBride followed Raphael Little. He was on the radar screen, and Little had no chance. The offense had an opportunity to move on the Wildcats, but ultimately put the ball and the game in the hands of the defense. If Kentucky was to ever break the 21-year losing streak to Tennessee, now was the time. And moving the ball between orange zones was working for the blue. But again, when it matters most, the heart of the Volunteers should never be underestimated. Right the wide side. Woodson back to throw, look, sets up, fires over the middle, that pass deflected at the goal line, incomplete. Rico McCoy got a hand on it. He was looking at the back of the end zone and McCoy came racing across, got a hand on it, now it's fourth down and goal. The next one was for all the marbles. Kentucky 0 for 2 on fourth down conversions in Tennessee territory. They go for it here, fourth and goal at the Tennessee five yard line. Woodson out of the shotgun, rolls to the right, looking, looking for the end zone. Tennessee throws, fires the pass, incomplete. Incomplete in the back of the end zone. Woodson couldn't find anybody open. He threw it across the field to Jacob Tammy. For Kentucky, it was the last gasp. And for Tennessee, it was a guarantee of a nine win season. Tennessee and Kentucky, this was quite a battle here in November, but the Tennessee Volunteers are gonna win this football game
From the season opener against Cal to the season finale against Kentucky, the Tennessee Volunteers were fired up, focused, and prepared. Those words inspired the Tennessee Volunteers in August. Those same five words defined them just four months later.